Welcome back to Coding Droplets, your go-to channel for mastering .NET applications. In this exciting tutorial, we are diving into the incredible world of data presentation with the highly versatile Maui List View Control. Don't forget to check the video description for the playlist link where you can find all the previous videos in this series. Let's jump right in. Mavoi List View Control is a control which provides a scrollable vertical list of selectable data items. List View manages the overall appearance of the list while using a data template to define the appearance of each item using a cell. .NET Mavoi offers various cell types to display combinations of text and images and it also allows to custom cells to display any desired content. List view includes additional features such as support for headers and footers, grouped data, pull to refresh functionality and context menu items. In order to ensure a smooth and uninterrupted learning process, we will continue working with the same project from our previous video. This approach will enable us to make use of the progress we have already made and expand upon it. Within this project, we have a model class named Collection Item, which consists of two important properties, Title and Description. This model class will form the basis for our exploration of data binding within the Mavoi List View Control. To demonstrate the List View Control, I'll create a new content page named List View Demo. Here we'll remove the auto-generated vertical stack layout and label, and instead We'll place the list view directly under the content page. I'll also update the main page in app.xaml.cs to ensure that the application displays this new content page when launched. Similar to our previous examples, list view provides an item source property where we can specify the items to be displayed in the list. In this case, I'll create an array of strings containing five different items, namely item 1, item 2, item 3, item 4, and item 5. Now let's run the application and observe the list view in the emulator. As expected, the items are displayed within the list and we can click on each item to select it. Let's explore the list view's scrolling functionality further. To demonstrate this, I'll copy and paste item 5 multiple times, creating a more extensive list. For the last item, I'll change the string to item 100. Running the application again, we can now see that the list view contains all the items and we can scroll up and down to view the entire list. The list view itself provides the scrolling functionality, eliminating the need of an additional scroll view. Now let's remove the extra items we added as they are no longer necessary. The list view also offers an item template property which allows us to specify the template for each item in the collection. To achieve this, we can use a data template inside the item template. In this case, I'll demonstrate using a view cell. View cell is a custom cell that defines its appearance using a view. Inside the view cell, I'll place a stack layout and assign a background color to it. Within the stack layout, I'll add a label to display the string. The text property of the label will be bound to the data following the same approach we used previously. Additionally, I'll format the label by providing a different text color and font attributes. Running the application once again, we can observe that the items are now displayed in the list view with a customized design. Let's add some margin to the label, ensuring it is properly displayed in the emulator. Furthermore, we can align the label to the center. Upon running the application, we can see the label is correctly aligned to the center. Next. Let's explore how we can assign the item source property of the .NET Mavoi list view from the C-sharp code and also how to bind complex objects. To begin, in the constructor of the content page class, I'll declare a list of collection item, which is the model class we created earlier. To populate this list, I'll simply copy and paste the items we created for the carousel view. Now let's provide a name for the list view control. Moving on to the code, we can assign the item source property to our list of collection item. Additionally, we need to modify the binding property of the label to title so that it displays the corresponding title from the model class. Furthermore, we'll add another label for the description 
To enhance the label's appearance, we can apply formatting and make adjustments to the margin and padding values. The binding property of the second label should be set to description to display the appropriate description from the model class. Now let's run the application in the emulator and observe the list view's appearance. We can see that the labels are properly showing the bound data. However, there seem to be some spacing issues that need to be addressed. To resolve this temporarily, we can remove the padding of the stack layout, which will improve the spacing between items. As you can see in the emulator, the label sound now appear clearer and properly spaced. But I need some padding for the stack layout. We'll ensure that they have a height that accommodates their content. We can achieve this by setting the has and even rows property of the list view to true. This property indicates whether the list can have rows with varying heights and by default it is set to false. In the emulator, we can observe that the list view cells now have sufficient space and adjust their height accordingly. Let's try increasing the padding to 20 and observe the effect in the emulator. As you can see, there is now more space between the list view cells. Additionally, I would like to introduce the separator color property, which defines the color of the bar that separates items in the list. In this case, I'll set it to red. When running the application in the emulator, you can see that the separator is now displayed in red. Continuing our exploration of .NET MAUI list view, let's now take a look at different types of cells that we can use within the list view. To begin, I'll remove the view cell from our current design and introduce a text cell. A text cell is used to display primary and secondary text on separate lines. In our case, I'll bind the title property to the text property of the text cell and the description property to the detail property of the text cell. Running the application in the emulator, you can observe that both the title and description are displayed on separate lines within the list view. Next, I would like to demonstrate how we can disable the selection in the list view. The list view control provides a property named selection mode, which can be set to none if we don't want the list view to be selectable. In the emulator, you can see that when I click on an item, it is not being selected due to the disabled selection mode. Moving on, Let's explore the switch cell. A switch cell is a cell that consists of a label and an on off switch. I'll bind the title property to text property of the switch cell. Running the application in the emulator, you can observe that the title is displayed on the left side of each cell accompanied by a switch on the right. By clicking on the switch, we can toggle it on or off. Finally, let's examine the entry cell. An entry cell is a cell that includes a label and a single line text entry field. I'll bind the title property to the label property of the entry cell. Running the application in the emulator, you can see that each list item now contains an entry field where you can enter text. As we conclude this tutorial on the MAUI list view control, we hope you now have a solid understanding of how to use this powerful tool to create scrollable lists in your .NET MAUI applications. By leveraging data binding and the flexibility of cell templates, you can seamlessly display and interact with your data. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out the playlist for complete .NET MAUI tutorial series. Thank you for joining us on this learning journey and happy coding!